。瞅瞅，这是我们老农民来告状了，大门锁着。Recently, this video has been circulating online, which shows flood disaster victims in Heilongjiang Province confronting their local government for answers. In the footage, numerous victims gather outside the government offices, criticizing the government's inadequate flood relief efforts, leaving the people hungry and homeless. Look, here come our elderly farmers to file complaints. The main entrance is locked; they won't let us in. Do you see that? We can't even go in. We have no place to eat because of the flooding. Inside, they are enjoying their air conditioning. We, the commoners, are here to voice our concerns, but they refuse to meet with us, and the doors are locked. We have no food. Do you see? The people have nowhere to turn. This is how the local government departments treat us. Both front and back entrances are locked. Following the severe floods which swept many cities throughout China, the Chinese Communist Party, which has consistently emphasized its commitment to serve the people, faced criticism for its delayed response. Contrary to expectations, there are reports of authorities appearing unresponsive to the urgent needs of the victims, with government departments closing their doors and leaving many feeling abandoned during their time of crisis. While widespread resentment swept across affected areas, the central government released statements claiming they had achieved quote significant success in flood prevention and disaster relief. Insiders have revealed that devastation across Heilongjiang Province was even more severe than in Zhouzhou County. To prevent the truth from leaking out, the government restricted online information about the floods in Heilongjiang. On August 10th, an internet user captured aerial footage over the province, showing vast areas submerged underwater. Due to the combined impact of typhoons Dok Sudi and Kanu, extreme rainfall hit northeast China. This had led to flooding and geological disasters. Cities like Harbin and Mu Danjiang were affected. Transportation, water, electricity, and communication infrastructures were damaged to various extent. According to reports from state-run media, multiple rivers exceeded warning levels: Mudan River, Laning River, Mai River, and Yalu River experienced high water levels, resulting in flooding. Over 370,000 people were affected in Heilongjiang, with a disaster-stricken crop area exceeding 637,000 acres. In total, 37 counties or districts were hit by the flood, with Wuchang City in Heilongjiang being most severely affected. Just look, the railway tracks have been swept away by the huge waters. My goodness, it's a vast expanse of water everywhere. Oh my heavens! The force of the water is overwhelming. The tracks are sinking further. We can't go further. Run back. The ground could give way. The narrative from state-run media regarding the flooding in the northeast matches their reports on the Hebei floods, attributing everything to heavy rainfall. The local government in Shanxi City also stated that the dire situation was due to heavy rainfall combined with flood season overlap and multiple disasters. However, local and residents of Wuchang County questions official explanation of quote floods caused by heavy rain. Recently, a local resident Chen Deming. Told the media that the flooding was due to floodwater discharges, possibly to protect larger cities and districts seen as key by the Chinese government. He said, "When they release the floodwater, it submerged our people's lands and houses. Everything below the second floor was inundated. Many houses were swallowed by the flood." Too 吓人了，都
水，还在上涨。Look at this flood, it's horrifying. The farmer's hard work has gone in vain in just a month we would have harvested. It's truly tragic. This year, the main rice-producing areas of Wuchang have all been affected to varying degrees. Not a single town among the 24 was spared. Another local netizen said the flow of the water was very rapid and the speed at which the water level rose was incredibly fast. It didn't seem like it was due to rainfall. Many captured footage of the floodgates being opened, suggesting that the flood was likely due to the release of water. This makes people wonder if the flood release was similar to the Jojo flood situation, where the safety of larger cities was prioritized over the safety and interest of smaller cities. Local resident Chen Mingde revealed in an interview with foreign media that on the night of the flood release on August 4th, neither he nor his sister, who lived in different neighborhoods, received any evacuation notices. At around 8 p.m., his sister child, who was out of town, saw a report of rising waters in various regions of Heilongjiang and urged them to evacuate to higher ground. Initially, his sister and her husband did not heed the warning and only decided to leave around 11.30 p.m. Just minutes after leaving, when his sister returned to retrieve their car, by then the water level in the neighborhood had already risen to knee height. To Chen Deming, what's even more frustrating than the unannounced water release is the indifference of the government and its workers towards a disaster-stricken people. He said, Our house became unlivable due to the flooding. We approached the local government multiple times seeking alternative accommodation, but they kept turning a blind eye. It was, this isn't a natural disaster. It's a man-made catastrophe. After the flooding, the Chinese government is seen to be reluctant to provide post-disaster subsidies and instead sent representatives to appease the victims. Unexpectedly, this led to even more resistance. In this video, a female colleague graduated turned village official was fiercely confronted by the victims after accidentally admitting there is no post-disaster subsidy. <laughs> After the flood resides, the people will have to face the devastated fields. Houses are inundated, the government is indifferent, and even the staple food of survival has been washed away by the flood. Life for the flood victim is bound to be even more challenging than one could imagine. Before the flood, rice fields in many areas of Heilongjiang were blossoming. Just when they were about to harvest, the floodwaters engulfed everything, turning their hard work to nothing. I haven't slept in over a day, constantly worrying about my fields. After returning, I see the crops are ruined by the floodwaters. A year's work gone. Look at this vast expanse of water. This is a tributary of the Larlin River, which we used for irrigation. But now the water level is too high. If the water keeps rising, our entire field will be submerged. We are located in the John Nan village of Heilongjiang province. Our rice was in the blossoming phase. Once submerged, it won't yield any grain. The water level from the Lone Her Mountain Reservoir last night reached an all-time high, now three, four times its usual level. We're downstream, so the areas upstream must have suffered even more. This is our fish pond. Its water level used to be quite low, but now it has risen significantly. If the water keeps rising, it will enter our houses. I see many vehicles on the roads, all farmers checking the conditions of their fields. Even my father, who's in his 50s, says he's never seen such a flood in his lifetime.
，我一看见没有走呢，我一看见地，我都跟崩溃了。我们是宋美，当时我们家里里面的米，没事，家里到了没不开，面面有面也不能吃，面也不能喝了。天，让你们看看啊。This is the second day of mud removal. Let me show you, we are currently cleaning the courtyard, and there's still a long way to go. If only someone had warned us about the incoming flood water release, our losses wouldn't have been this severe. It reminds me of a joke from a few days ago. It goes, if a war breaks out, rest assured, my country, just give me a gun and I won't let a single true enemy escape. Who is the true enemy that this person is referring to? That is, the Chinese government and its officials. According to the disaster-stricken residents of Zhouzhou County, the government's relief supplies are both delayed and meager. After days without electricity, water or food, the victims from Maotou village recently received the authorities' relief supplies for four days. A total of five small bread rolls, a few bottles of water and six packs of instant noodles per person. The flood victims looked famished. They also prohibited journalists from reporting on this. It was revealed by some locals that the relief supplies sent to the disaster areas are just for show and cannot be touched. Similarly, in Heilongjiang's relief efforts, the government treated disaster victims the same way. Chen Deming said. Only after lives were lost did the government distribute some rice, flour, and oil. No one takes care of our housing issue. They promise subsidies, but how much can they give? They are just fooling the people. Ironically, on August 16th, the CCP decided to offer loans as disaster relief. The People's Bank of China will provide a loan of 35 billion yuan for disaster relief. So this means people affected by the flood have to actually borrow money from the government to pay for their losses. Some netizens even mentioned that these loans are not interest-free, with interest rate as high as six percent. While Chinese people are suffering from the floods, the CCP generously donated to foreign disaster-stricken areas. Recently, the foreign ministry spokesperson Mao Ning announced at a press conference, "Quote: China will provide an additional 300 million yuan in disaster relief supplies to Pakistan." 根据巴方的需要，中国政府决定在已经提供的一亿元人民币紧急人道主义援助的基础上，追加提供三亿元人民币救灾物资。中方已经紧急筹措了两百吨蔬菜，将通过卡拉昆仑公路尽快交运巴方。With floods occurring frequently throughout China and the disaster situation worsening, there are increasing reports of protests from the affected areas. Given the way the CCP treats its people, it's only a matter of time before they face the consequences of their actions.